Hello, everyone. Welcome to the performance meeting about the source editor in the blog viewer. This week, um, we have a few things to go over and let's just go straight into it. Dennis. Yes, uh, it was just one observation while I was uh, reviewing Jacques' uh, MR. Um, I know there is one instance in this new view refactoring application that we are actually using the RAST endpoint to, to get the blob data. So I was wondering whether we could, could actually use GraphQL to not mix up the, the things, especially since, since it's a new application, apparently we have some flexibility there and it's, it, it's, it's related to performance in my opinion, because it's going to be faster to fetch the data with GraphQL. Uh, yeah, so we currently have that one GraphQL or REST endpoint that we use for viewers that's not uh, migrated to view yet. So it's still in the in the Haml format. So for those views, because we don't have the GraphQL um, fields available yet, um, I just decided to use the existing uh, REST endpoint. And then with the idea that over time we'll migrate all of the viewers over to view anyway, and then get rid of that uh, endpoint over time. But I think it, I think you're right. If it would be beneficial to add those fields to the GraphQL input, I don't think it will be um, on the backend side. I don't, I can't see that it'd be much work. Uh, but I'll create an issue for that, and then I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering. You you mentioned that you have to use the Rust endpoint because there is not enough data in the GraphQL endpoint. Like, but how comes that we reduce the amount of required data in our view application compared to Haml application? How comes? Um, so currently, so the GraphQL endpoint fetches the existing Haml um, fragments, so the Haml uh, let's say we're viewing a file that plays audio, it's not yet migrated to the view app. So you haven't written any view code for that yet. And then it fetches the actual Haml file, the rendered content, rendered HTML. Well, yeah, okay. Um, uh, so so you, you mean for like the, uh, the GraphQL doesn't provide us with this uh, like generated HTML. Uh, exactly. Part. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and by saying that we might add that data to GraphQL, you mean that we might add that generated HTML content to GraphQL endpoint? Is that uh, what you yeah, mean? So if that's what you're suggesting that we add no, those. That's, that's like, after I heard that, I, I don't think I would suggest that. Um, because like, I, I, I thought there is, there are some data bits, right? But uh, definitely I wouldn't, suggest adding that uh, that monstrous uh, thing into GraphQL. That uh, that would be a bit too much of a stretch, yeah. especially considering like you mentioned one, one important point. So uh, over time, we are going to migrate to view only, right, application. So the Haml part is gonna, gonna be uh, removed there. And this, so, so essentially this means that over time, we are going to get rid of the Haml part, means we are going to get rid of the Rust call uh, naturally. Exactly, yeah. So it would be, if we add it to GraphQL, it would be like a temporary thing, which might not be beneficial. Right, okay, now that, 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 then yeah, then sticking with sticking to Rust probably makes sense in this particular case because adding this information to GraphQL doesn't make a lot of sense on its own. But considering that it's going to be the temporary thing, then it's just just a red flag apparently. So sticking to Rust is totally fine. Thanks for for the for the explanation. Uh, that that makes sense. I'll uh, write down the summary. Well, thank you. 
Yeah, it seems like it will go away as we migrate to the new viewers. Um, okay, um, I have my I have the next point. Um, so I just wanted to check uh, and just I don't know if it was mentioned here last time we had this meeting or not. Um, but we have a stretch item for fourteen two. It's accepting merge requests. So if any if if whoever gets to it first, it would be nice to have it. Uh, so what we need is, um, do we need any feature developed, uh, um, Jacques, to be able to turn it on via URL or something? We still need that done, right? Yeah, I guess we need a way to get the parameter from the URL and then enable the feature um, okay. on the Ruby level. Yeah, okay. So we yeah, need... Maybe I, I can create an issue for that, unless you want to include it in the existing um, one that we linked there. Um, we might actually re either replace it, because if, if we don't have the URL option, we can't add the site speed entry. So we need a feature, uh, might be worth creating an issue for that feature and replacing it as a stretch however uh whoever gets to it first the better um does it, so we have to prioritize the work of the refactory itself uh and this ended up being like uh, uh um falling down the the pile but i feel like we're missing this visibility. We're missing the visibility of what's the state of the testing right now, so that we can then get our SCT in place um, to help update the test if we need to. Um, so that it would be really nice if until the end of this milestone, we could, so my milestone two weeks. Okay, it might go for 14.3, but uh, it'd be nice to soon have some way to visualize the um what's the metrics of the blob of the new blob viewer because they're not going to be out of the box they won't be probably um positive i'm expecting because we're loading nope. uh the blob the, the monaco and everything so we are already expecting that but we are we have to start looking at that too because that's going to be an important part of the story uh and there's a missing task here for the for the test uh, for the quality team to kind of update the test to, in a way that reflects the preloading of uh, that. And it might, or it might be that we just update the explore page to also preload uh, the source editor. So there's a couple of things there. Now, not that we're trying to turn the feature right on right now, we will turn on the feature like whenever we're ready. But um, it feels like it's a, it's an important step to have as early as possible. So I just wanted to raise it here. Uh, just one, just one yeah. note. Uh, I've um, again while uh, reviewing uh, Jacques and Mar yesterday and today. Uh, it's actually quite noticeable that the the new application is uh, slower. Like it has uh, worse loading, at least loading performance comparing to the Hamel application, and it's not related to source editor, right? It is reload to the fact that we are wrapping things into the view application and view application is bootstrapped later in the process. It's discovered later in the process. That's, that's the main reason. That's why uh, when we migrate to view applications, we have to accept that no matter what we do, it's gonna be slower. Do you, yeah. do you think that's the case for like the largest files for the largest blobs? Because you have a point and we like, I think we're all aware of that. But for when you have a very large MR, sorry, a very large file, yeah. old habit, the server side render takes a lot of time because it has to get all that stuff in. Yeah. So do you think it's still uh, the case? That's that's a good question. Uh, apparently. So what I can tell you is that we have um I think we have implemented this uh, user matrix in the in the blob viewer. So the uh it mm -hmm. might be that sort of we reduce the server time right we reduce the server time by not requiring this huge generated html uh content right 
But at the same time, on the front end, we delay the things because we are moving to view. So I'm not sure whether those things will be equal. Uh, apparently, for the large files, uh, the view application will still be faster. Once we move to the source, uh, um, have we moved source editor already in the view application? Uh, yeah, it's enabled yeah, for sure. thick yes. files. So for the large files, it might be actually faster with uh, even with the view application. But yeah. the, the, the thing is that large files are uh, sort of a niche use case. Large files are not something that we have to uh, um, right. to, 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 to care about that much. Yeah, it's, it's a large percentile. Yeah, yeah. However, we do have to be aware, one of the motivations for this is the workflow going from the file tree to the blob viewer rather than rendering a new, a new page. And in that sense, that, that flow will be in field faster. So that's, that's why I think this is very, very, very crucial to this project is to start, start working on the story of the metrics. Um, so the earlier we have it, the earlier we can, work, we can start working on that and preparing and, and also just prioritizing work to improve that because it's probably, like you said, there's many things that are not even related to the source editor that we can probably do I don't know if we're already loading those requests on startup JS, like a bunch of things, a bunch of things that we can do to start tweaking the page to make it faster, as as faster as 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 we can. So and also update the testing themselves. So wait, wait, I'm, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I've I've got an idea now. I'm all of a sudden I lose the point of why we need to be able to toggle the feature flag from a URL. Okay. So so. We want to we want to add the URL to the site speed reports, yeah. but but we don't want to um, remove the we don't want to enable the feature flag sure. uh, itself. Sure. What if we scope the feature flag to a project? We create the new project, enable the feature flag for that. Oh, right, feature flag a right. We enable the feature flag for the project, and we do test do add the URL to that project. I have an explanation because okay. we have the historical records of the previous blob uh, viewer and yep. we want to be able to compare the, the evolution side by side with the old version Haml and the new version Haml. We want to use the same file, the same project, the same right. URL. We just copy the, copy the content of the file into the new project. So we have, yes, we have two separate projects, but we have exactly the same file. That's, okay. that's, what, I did. that's what I did for the large blob. Uh, I didn't create that within the uh, within the main project, but I created this uh, as a side project. That would be easier. Put that file there, and then then technically we uh, there is nothing we have to implement. We can start but like I'm just thinking sure. out loud. Sure, we sure, could sure, start. Sure. We could start with that, and if this doesn't give us any reliable comparison, then then we will uh, sort of investigate. And invest more time into into enabling the feature flags from the URL if we if that's needed. Yeah, I'm wondering if the size of the project will affect. I don't think so. Um, uh, that blob, might be an option for the blob. I'm I'm not sure whether we request any project information when we when we view a blob. Uh, probably we do. Probably we do just permissions and stuff. Yeah. But I think that's. Yeah. That might be reasonable because we don't have a history of commits. We don't have a blame. We don't have anything like that. Um, why can okay? Why we can copy that file to a new project and scope the feature flag to it? Okay, that sounds like a good probably approach. Uh, actually, see that is point. Cool. Thanks. I'm fine either way. Uh, we can, like you said, if we see that it's not reliable or so for some reason we want to just change it, we can still change it. Um, Wait a second. You know oh. what? Yeah. To make, no. thing, to make things super even, mm -hmm. you create two new projects. You, okay. cre you create the same file in both of those projects and you measure those two projects. You enable the feature flag for one project and you do disable the feature flag for another project. Then you have, uh, you, then you compare apple, apples to apples. You, you sort of, you 
uh, exclude the project's differences from the equation. And then you, if we see if you it's measure, equal... You measure, you okay. measure only the, uh, the blobs. So two okay. new projects, they are absolutely uh, equal, sort of, uh, and exactly the same file in both projects and measure those. Okay, and then what I would say is like, if we see that the metrics of the disabled feature flag is exactly the same as the other project, we can drop that URL from site exactly. screen. Exactly, yes. Right, yeah. cool. No, that, that makes sense. That's actually, that's actually an easier, since we're on a rush to get this on the testing, feels like a, a quicker way. Uh, At least it will start giving us some data right now, and uh, then we will iterate from there. Right, I guess that's it. Jacques, any questions on that? Sounds good. Uh, no, it makes sense, yeah. Sweet, right. Uh, the spike, um, as it turned, so we had a, a spike on the timings of the um, source view, um, the blob viewer, uh, TBT, I think it was TBT. Uh, and I wanted to check in, do we have, do you know already what's causing it? Is it, is it, has it gone down? That's my wishful thinking, <laughs> Dennis. Uh, no, I haven't checked that. Uh, I, I, uh, Naila uh, wrote yesterday that the, uh, the degradation is still there. I don't have time to look at this okay. this week because I have to fight with my personal cars. We are, we're on the very end of the quarter. Two days. Yeah, two T days. T minus two. And, oh, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm not going to look at, into this now, but yeah, no maybe, maybe next week, if I have time for that. I still have that thing that's called deliverables. So. Right. No, absolutely. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm just trying to understand if you already have an explanation for it. And Nalia did mention that there was an upgrade. That could be it, but I don't want to put like uh, I don't want to put that all of no our hopes can, on that. Uh, the uh, I I would look into into some um, first thing I would I would look into uh, would be the backend time. I have as I said I haven't checked that backend time whether we have any differences in the backend time. If it's if we don't and if it's purely the front end, then I would just. I don't know, then, then it would require some analysis. But from what we have, uh, from what it, we, we know of, there were no changes that could affect that. The only change that has been merged in the last days was the one from me, where we just add, and it was pure CSS thing, where we add the, like, remember that, that performance fix where we load first yep. 70 lines and yep. the last one. So uh, the, uh, the new merge request introduced sort of the line between those 70 and the last one showing the ellipses. So to, to show that there is something happening there, but that was pure CSS. And I don't believe that. When was that back. deployed? Do we know? Monday, probably. I don't know. So it, it kind of correlates with the, with the spike to some degree, but I don't believe it's, it's related because there were a lot of things happening, like the upgrade of uh, right. site speed, Chrome. the upgrade of Chrome, my mm -hmm. merge request. So I, Do we, I don't that, believe that. So that's not behind the feature flag, is it? No, 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 it's not. Okay, it's just CSS. Because we, we shipped something that we thought was going to make timings better and it didn't. So we wrapped it behind a feature flag too to kind of like, this is trickier because it's CSS, based on CSS. But um, we should so, still keep an eye on this. And then later, if it comes to it, we'll probably... Um, if you want, if, you, if we'll have some, some like five minutes, we can just do the quick look into that right now. Like, um, to, but but we have plenty of things to discuss. Probably. How the, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I'd rather do an investigation outside of the call. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it is something for us to keep in mind uh, that it's not solved and it's yep. it's a significant jump. It's like more yep. than more than fifty percent yep. of a jump. So it was. It's not good. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on this and keep checking this back again once we have the new call in two weeks. I'll be off next week. So if you can, either both of you uh, take a look at it and see what, what might be causing that. 
Um, I'm not sure what would be, the, so I don't know. My initial assumption is if we have something that we shipped in the code new and we call, and there was a spike, regardless of there being a Chrome, we need to isolate that and we need to check whether that was it or not. And there's two ways. One, the easiest way is we revert the MR, we ship it, see if it worked, see if it doesn't move. If it, if it, if it doesn't move, we revert the revert. <laughs> that's the easiest way the other would be to wrap it behind a feature flag and then turn it on and off to see uh, whether the spike goes up or not uh, that would be one way um, but because the thing is we're probably going to be doing some investigations regarding the Chrome upgrade and everything but this is the one that we can't control is, is on our side of the code so as much as it doesn't make sense um it would still be something that I would check. So if I remember correctly, we're still, we still have some new JavaScript running, right? On that fix. It's not just 100% CSS. We still have the toggle, uh, the, the performance toggling one. the lines. Yeah. The performance one, yeah, it's uh, CSS plus JavaScript. Like, uh, right. So it still toggles the lines, yeah. Yeah, it, it toggles the, not the lines, but it toggles the uh, class at the top. Right, right, right. That's what yeah. I mean. But that, like the spike, the spike is not related to that fix because that fix has been de deployed like more than a week ago. Okay, so and, okay. and there was no spike back then. Uh, do you see that? So the, the, uh, the interesting thing is that there is no the correlation, dates? no correlation between LCP and the TBT. So the LCP hasn't been hasn't got any spike. It's only the TBT, so it cannot be something related to some visual thing it's it, it has to be related to some some to the main thread being blocked by some javascript computation or something like this yeah but we did so it's, so i get your point it's weird i, I agree it's weird yeah, yeah. um but we haven't we haven't shipped anything recently <clears throat> To that page, without that, without the, the blob editor, uh, without the new blob refactor enabled. So for the Hamel version, we haven't shipped. I, I don't think anything else was shipped there. Um, what was the name of that merge request that I can have it here? Do you know the which one with the with the fix? The or CSS with, fix with the CSS. Uh, let me just find it. Um... I'm gonna paste the. Uh... Oh, subtle, subtle yes, ellipses. Exactly, exactly. Okay, it so was right in front of me. Okay. Okay, because what I want to see is the actual date, the number of the day that it was merged, that was deployed actually. Yeah, we um, have to check when it was deployed, and it were it reached the canary. Uh, yesterday. Oh no, two days ago, actually, three sixteen p.m. So July twenty seven. That's yeah. that's when it arrived. So we 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 we're, we're we're running tasks on Canary uh, on ten k. Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. No, it's not on Canary. So what we do for the ten k is we use the nightly. So if it was merged and deployed on the seven on the twenty seven, we can expect that sometime around the twenty seven, it was included on the nightly. And he was run ran on the tests uh, of that thing, um, right? What, I, what I'm trying to understand is like, what was the previous run? Um, what I'm trying to get to is the 10k. Let me get to the 10k reference architecture wiki. Mm. Sorry, thanks for entertaining me. And, and then as, as I'm loading this, my, 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 my thing here is that despite how little sense it makes, we have like, we have to look and I, I agree. It's really weird if that causes that spike, but we can definitely uh, investigate that later. Yeah, yeah. So TVT 34. Project source file. Oh, and that's the thing. So it's 
on the 26th. So the, the TBT goes over, goes up on, on the 26th, from the 26th to the 27th. So yeah. I just... Yeah, so 27th, 10 a.m. is the first measurement with the uh, increased TBT. Yeah, <clears throat> and given that that thing was, uh, let's see, merged, I really need a time of merge at the merge request widget. So it was merged 26th at 9 p.m. So it is reasonable to have it included on the nightly of the 26th to 27. It was tested on 27. I think it's worth having a look. Um, but we can take it at whenever we have time. We don't have to rush it, but it would probably be something that I would still, I think we should still uh, see. Because so with it, um, so this is one of the, one of the bits, right? You had another MR doing the data loading, was it? The the data loading? So you have an attribute selector data loading. Is that related to this or no? No. Okay. What, what, what would you request are you talking about? So I'm, ta I'm talking about the subtle ellips ellipses for loading yeah. state for large blobs. Yeah. So this is just CSS, but yeah, how? It's, it's pure CSS. How does the the class gets toggled uh, from oh. JavaScript, and it that that toggle toggling happens in JavaScript, and that's, that's already that's, there. That's already there. Like, yeah, that's that was part of the like the class toggle hasn't wasn't even the part of uh, of the performance uh, merge request last week. It was right. there for like forever. But, but what, was, what I did in the uh, performance related merge request was moving this to the request idle callback. I think that's that's the only change. Okay, and that wasn't deployed on that, on, and that on was 27. deployed. Yeah, that was deployed uh, on much earlier stage. Yeah. So if you if like, I'm looking at the dashboard for this page for the results. So right. all the all the things actually are very stable. Some go down, some stay on the same pay level, and it's only the TBT that that is um, going crazy. I'm trying to figure out how where I can find the site speed results and huh, site speed report. All right, site speed report. Here we go. And it's web project file source. Yes. Yes. And the TBT here in the metrics. So the test. Okay. Right. So it's the new version of site speed and the TBT. Where is the TBT? <clears throat> Right, 34 seconds. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm... And now I see why, because mm -hmm. now, no. Um, I need some other day to compare this to, um, because it seems like the, The emojis we are fetching takes enormous amount of time in this one. Yeah, and that was that before. It, it's now, now. Um, uh, no, I know, but the emojis were already loading before. Did we did we change anything on the emoji? The way we load emojis, emoji. I don't think. Okay, this is weird. Because yeah, I thought I thought the toggling of the class was shipped in that MR. If it's just the CSS, yeah, it's it's pure CSS. That's, that's even more more uh, weird, weirder. All right, um, we have to. I think we just have to keep an eye on this. We can't figure out everything on the call. Um, so I'll 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 just suggest we keep an eye on this and keep sharing on on Slack whatever we find. Um, Thanks for the link on the agenda. That was good. Thanks. And I, I would just, yeah, go, Jacques, move on to your point. I think it's better. Well, I think it's easier if I share my screen for nope. this one. Yeah. 
Which one am I sharing? I'm going to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. <laughs> Can you see the agenda? Yes. Yes. That's what we see now. Cool. Um, yeah. So in this milestone, I'm playing around a bit with um, increasing the TBT on the on the blame page. So it's not really related to um, like the blob discussion we're having at the moment, but maybe I think it's worth highlighting Dennis and feel free to comment on the merge request as well. Um, but I'm playing around with content visibility, which um, basically renders whatever the user is currently seeing in the in the viewport and not rendering anything else. So in turn, it reduces the time um, spent rendering of the page, which also reduces uh, TBT. And I'm currently seeing about an average of 267% increase in TBT. Jacques. It will change like this. Jacques, if I may, let me just clarify one thing though. Um, I think you're equating the rendering time with TBT, and that's not necessarily that's not necessarily the same metric. Um, uh, I've actually, I took uh, total blocking time, so the one that you saw at the bottom here. Oh, the estimation. Okay. With three TBT runs, I took the average of those, and then basically got the difference between these two numbers. Got it. Okay. I know. I thought it was, you were picking up on the purple part. Okay. Oh uh, no no. So yeah, I'm seeing uh, quite good results. However, they are the one limitation that I'm currently aware of is that it's currently not supported in Firefox and IE. Um, but it or, looks like or Safari. Firefox. Yeah. Oh yeah, Safari. That's the way to go. Um, but it looks like uh, Firefox has an issue to to add support at some stage. So. Okay. Uh, it's still in a draft state, so feel free to comment there if you have any any uh, comments or thoughts. Yeah, the way I see this, this is, is if it's not harmful, ship it. This is this is this is nice. Uh, uh, the the problem is though that uh, this will differ from a page to page um, in terms of um, confusability. Um, I mean, I mean. Um, it, it all depends on the layout and on the uh, on the element we're outputting on that or another um, view. So for, um, for the, the, this fix fixes specifically the uh, rendering and uh, rendering technically rendering does uh, require some computing power, right? So and there are some things that are related to rendering like recal uh, recalculation of the style, styling, uh, and that does block the, uh, does increase the total blocking times. But the, the thing is that for the, for, the, for the blob view, we have solved this by, by not showing, like not using the content visibility, but we just don't show, any lines that are not essential right away, right? So we limit to 70, 70 lines uh, on, on the first load. So technically I would expect the result of using content visibility for the blob view and uh, comparing it to the current master will technically yield exactly the same results or like very comparable ones. Yeah, there are similar approaches. For sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Are, we, are we keen to see how these two in conjunction would um, work? Um, so by the way, Jacques, this is applied to the current Hamel page or the new, or both? Uh, so this would be the current one because I don't think, I think Monaco uses its own style sheets or okay. I don't think it uses a star sheet, right? Sure. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, for 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 Monaco, it won't uh, make any difference because Monaco uh, shows Already. only like yeah. five fifty lines or something like this, and then then it's the order or uh, like uh, the virtual scrolling. There. Sure. So it's uh, it it won't have any effect for for uh, source editor. Okay. So it would be nice to see yeah uh, the improvement that this has on the current page. Uh, together with your with your solution, um, and we'll see 
we'll see. Yeah, the, the 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 downside of not having it supported by many browsers, by some browsers, I'm I'm okay with. The question we need to see is as you scroll down the page, does it have a negative impact on that experience? Because the rendering has to be done at some point. So the yeah. question is, do you feel anything else different on the page? It does feel a little, little bit different. Let me sure. keep trying to do this. Um, so as you scroll, oh, because... so you're on the blame page. So you're not on the same page or on the blob viewer. So this is on the blame page, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so currently, so obviously when the, li the lines need to be rendered at some stage. So yeah. that means when you scroll faster, like when you scroll fast, the browser needs to try and uh, catch up with the rendering. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the call now because sure. there might be a bit of a lag, but we'll see if I scroll fast. Like there's a little bit, of, there's like a few I milliseconds see to yeah. see some empty lines. That's currently the only negative impact that I've seen, but the user, for me personally, it's not a bad experience compared to how fast the page loads. Sure. Um, compared to before, do does the native search on the page work? So if you go to the top of the page and search for nested, does it find all the occurrences? Oh, you mean a command search command F? That's a good question. Let me see. Like nested, so yeah. like search for nested or something. So it does, yeah. it does go to it. Um, this is an interesting one. Okay. I think I've read that somewhere, if you use content visibility hidden, the search won't work, but because it's auto, the browser knows um, how to find the items. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll just still want to see this ship, especially being on the blame page. It's a, it's another approach and we're experimenting and learning. Um, and I feel this page is a little bit more complex because it has a little bit of a, uh, some, some row spans happening over there. So it, it is more costly to render. Um, so yeah, I'll, yeah, test it and, uh, get it through UX review and, and let's ship it and see how it, uh, how it behaves. Um, we do have a blame page being tracked, right? Uh, on, this, on the tests. On the 10K, yeah. at least. Um, yeah, the 10K thanks. we do. Okay, that's okay then. We can see how, we can see the impact that he has there on the on the 10K. But yeah, good stuff. Thanks for sharing. Cool. Uh, Any, anything else? No, that's all for me. Cool, we can stop sharing, right. Uh, Dennis, anything else from you? All good? Nope. Yep. Thanks for uh, for uh, for uh, playing with this uh, content visibility, Jacques. It's uh, it might actually it might um, might bring some um, some interesting use cases for that. Yeah. It's actually. Yeah. I think I think it will be interesting, and I, I like that we're exploring different avenues. We have the full on virtual scrolling. We have your 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 trick with this with the rows. And now we have this option. So we're exploring many options because I think the more we understand the mitigation things for the high TBTs, the better we can apply them to each page. So uh, the other part will be to circulate this across the team, but we'll get there. Um, all right, and then I guess that's it. We have 17 minutes back and uh, thank you for your time and your contributions. It's uh, appreciated and uh, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you on another call. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.